So all you're gonna do is sit in a comfortable position, take a deep breath in, and then just ask yourself, what's going on with you right now? What's your emotional state? If you feel like any emotions are present that are pretty intense, like sadness, anger, frustration, take a few more deep breaths just to center yourself and gently release those emotions. It always helps me to grab my journal and just write through it a little bit. It helps me to see what's going on in my head on paper. Go ahead and take a deep breath in. There's a lot of deep breaths with mindful moments. Hi, everybody. I'm Amy Clover. Oh, everybody answers in this room. That's nice. I'm Amy Clover. I'm a health coach. I'm a fitness personality, and I'm a mental health advocate. I'm also the founder of a movement and site called Strong Inside Out, where we help people release shaming metric-based health standards and build individual health instead. And now I'm here to talk to you today about fitness and specifically motivation when it comes to physical fitness. And usually when I say things like that, I think a lot of people in the audience are like, oh no, here's a woman who's gonna tell me to just do it like everybody else does, or to suck it up and get my workouts in, blah, 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 I've tried that and it doesn't help with motivation. This is not that talk at all. I am not that kind of person. Strong Side Out is not that brand. In fact, today, we're gonna to talk about health and the societal perception of what health is and how it can actually sabotage your healthy efforts and a different way to go about it instead. Cool? So today I wanna to talk to you first by giving you a little bit about my story about why I got involved in this kind of work, why I'm so passionate about this message. So I grew up in Marin County. Anybody from Northern California in here? Yeah! I grew up in Marin County and all I wanted to do, I'm sorry if you love it, was escape. And when I was, when I was growing up, what I saw was a lot of TV and a lot of movies. So naturally, I wanted to be an actress. I was like, that's gonna get me out of here. But as I grew up looking up to all of these actresses on the screen, I noticed something, maybe not consciously, but a little subconsciously, that all of them looked the same. All of them were, you know, of two body types, maybe. There was the skinny actress, and there was the athletic skinny actress. And I was at a healthy body weight. I always had been throughout my whole childhood. But I internalized that and I said, okay, well, if I want to be an actress, I need to look like them. And so when I went to theater school for college, I just dived into fitness magazines. I started inhaling them and I started learning about nutrition and about working out. And I started learning that it was calories in, calories out. And so perfectionist me was like, oh, well, if a 1,200 calorie diet is supposed to help me lose weight, I wanna lose it faster, so 800 calories would be better, right? Or you know, if I need to work out three times a week for 30 minutes at a time, you know, I would lose weight faster if I worked out six days a week for an hour and a half at a time. So it really got out of hand. It really got obsessive. I got really fixated on metrics, like weight, waist circumference, the size of pants that I was wearing, and I started feeling faint all the time. I had a job where I was on my feet and I just couldn't get that nice energy that you're supposed to feel when you feel healthy. But I thought that I was being healthy because this is what I learned in magazines and stuff. But what I didn't realize was that this wasn't maintainable. So I started um, going through this cycle of trying to do all of these uh, things like the, the 800 calorie diet and the working out nonstop. And I realized that I couldn't keep going. My body wouldn't let me keep going. And so I'd crash and burn right into a binge. I would just start eating uncontrollably. I couldn't stop. I felt like such a failure. I felt like if I were just stronger, I would be able to do this. Because obviously if the magazines are saying it, then there's a lot of people out there who can do this and keep doing it. And so I was searching for some semblance of control because I felt so out of control. And that's when I developed bulimia. 
I started throwing up a lot of my meals and it worked for a time until it didn't work. And then I got so out of control, I turned to diet pills, then I turned back to bulimia, and then I turned to all of these different things. And I finally just said, okay, I'm gonna stop throwing up, cold turkey, I'm gonna stop. And when I stopped, I didn't realize something. I didn't realize that if you just change the behaviors, but don't address the underlying issue of the eating disorder, it's gonna manifest in different ways. And that's what happened for me. At this point, I had already fallen in love with physical fitness. I was a personal trainer, I had my own business, and something in the fitness world that's really glorified is overtraining, is these unhealthy restriction diets. And so I was doing those, and uh, I was working out way too much, eating too little, and I thought that that was good, because that's what we're taught, these extreme things that we need to do to control the way that we look. And I never felt perfect enough. The whole time, I never ever felt perfect enough, even when I was a size two. And then, along came the gig of a lifetime. I knew I wanted to help change lives with physical fitness. I knew there was like more to this movement and mindset kind of thing. And I finally got my chance. A brand, a European brand, that owns 150 gyms across Europe, hired me to be one of their elite fitness instructors. You see, instead of having teachers at the front of classes, they were gonna replace them with big, basically like fitness movies up on screen. It was very European. And they had us in like Hollywood type locations, all glammed up and teaching these fitness videos. And I was like, oh man, this is my chance. This is my chance, I gotta show the world what I'm made of. I gotta show the world that I can do this, how perfect I can be. And unlike any time before, I dived into restriction, I dived into working out to an obsessive, obsessive degree. And it was crazy because I was doing these things, I was doing a restriction program that I learned from my nutrition certification. I was doing workouts that were the norm amongst all my trainer friends. All of this was the norm, and yet I was netting zero or under calories a day. I was working out two and a half hours a day. That is not healthy, but I kept telling myself, this is healthy because everybody else is doing it, because everybody else is telling me how good I look, and how hard I'm working, and all of this stuff. And it did work. I got to about 13% body fat, and if you are familiar with body fat percentage, you know that 13% for women is where you stop having your period. Hormone imbalance starts to happen. Cognitive functioning becomes impaired. Adrenal fatigue sets in, which it did for me as well. But I walked into that first day of shooting. This first contract had two shoots. I walked into that first day, and I was like, I look close to perfect. Close, there was never, never quite there. I looked about that close. And I remember that they were planning to put me in a tank top for that first shoot day. And at the last minute, they decided to put me in a sports bra. And I freaked the F out. I was like, oh, no, 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 I didn't dehydrate for this day. I was planning to de dehydrate for tomorrow. I went up to the client and I apologized to her for the way that I looked. I remember very clearly her looking at me horrified, looking down at my six pack and looking back up at me and saying, what are you talking about? I'm actually really surprised that she hired me again after that contract. But that gives you an idea of where my mindset was. It was so insane. And so the shoots went off without a hitch. I finished that whole contract, and then nothing. The contract was done, and I, that promise of being in front of those thousands of people in those gyms across Europe was out the window. Because who knows if we were gonna get another contract, who knows if this was even going to succeed as an idea. And I found myself completely out of control, unlike I'd ever been out of control before. I binged like nobody's business. Like all the foods that I had restricted for the entire time that I was dieting up until that shoot, I couldn't get enough of them, like packages at a time. And I was working with a mentor at that time 
And I finally opened up to her and I said, I feel so out of control, I don't know what to do. I'm throwing all this motivation away. I feel completely unmotivated. I'm throwing away these results. Everybody expects me to look this way and I'm throwing it all away. I don't know why I'm sabotaging myself. What do I do? And she listened and she finally just said, Amy, you gotta get back into eating disorder recovery. I don't know what it was about her being able to say that to me because therapists had actually told me that in the past. But when she said it, something clicked. I realized that if I was feeling this way in my mind, and if my body was demanding that I eat all this food to make up for all of this restriction that I've been doing for a few months, something was not healthy about this. Something was very wrong. Something really had to change. And so I dived head first back into eating disorder recovery. And thank God I did, I've been recovered. I consider myself still in recovery, probably for the rest of my life. And one of the main things that I learned about recovery was that one of the main drivers in eating disorders, but not just eating disorders, in unhealthy relationships with food, with body image, and with fitness, are all rooted in perfectionism. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. It doesn't have to look like my story, in order to be perfectionism. Sometimes it's rooted in just being enough. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm in the wrong room. Um, sometimes it's just rooted in being enough. And now perfectionism is cl classified as the need to be or appear perfect. And it manifests in all or nothing thinking, believing that it has to be this 100% over here, otherwise it's nothing at all, like everything in this realm is nothing. And it also manifests in extreme actions. And it keeps people from developing a sane movement and nutrition routine, and it actually sabotages our healthy efforts. Now, there are three different types of perfectionism. There is, whoop, yep, self-oriented, those who have extremely high standards of themselves and struggle, struggle to live up to them, there's other-oriented, or those who have extremely high expectations of other people, leading them to be overly critical, impatient, and judgmental. And then there's socially prescribed. It's those who feel pressure to be perfect in everything they do in order to earn love or acceptance from other people, basically. And they're plagued by constant feelings of not enoughness. I know that feels like you can relate with it or a lot of people in this room might be able to relate with that. Now, bad news, if you relate with one of these, you most likely relate with at least another one, if not all of them. And that's super common. It's not something I want you to get down on yourself for, because we are taught as a society to be perfectionists. That's something to be looked up to. But all of these are rooted in unrealistic motivations. Because if we're aiming for perfect, and perfect does not exist, it does not exist, then we're always gonna feel like failures. We're always gonna fall short. And same thing with good enough. If we're aiming for good enough and we can't control what's good enough for everybody we're trying to be good enough for, we're constantly chasing what we can't achieve. So we have to switch our perspective. That's where mental optics comes in. Now mental optics is a term that we at Strong Inside Out have created to describe the ways in which our minds influence what we see in the mirror, how we feel in our bodies, and how we perceive other people and their reactions to us. They are not facts, okay? They're just the way that we see the world, and they are formed by the experiences that we have had in our lives. And now, if you're wondering more about what mental optics are, they're the difference between seeing movement as a chore versus a release, or the difference between seeing food as temptation versus nourishment, or your body as something to fix versus a functional loving home. And they get formed without our consent. Here are a few ways that our mental optics are formed here. There's upbringing, our parents or our family, there's media, there's TV, there's movies, there's ads, there's magazines. There's school, anything that you heard repetitively from teachers or from schoolmates. And then unfortunately, bullying and trauma have a hefty hand in forming your mental optics as well. 
Now, since we're talking mainly about physical fitness here today, we're going to focus on that realm. And one of the main ways that our mental optics are formed around fitness and health and nutrition is through performance health ideals. Now, before I tell you exactly what performance health is, I want to just do an experiment here with you guys. I want to show you how prevalent performance health is in this room. So I'm going to call out a few phrases. And if you have heard them before, or maybe they're your mantra, or maybe you heard them a lot before, I want you to raise your hand and keep it up. Cool, here come the phrases. No pain, no gain. Do I need to say the rest of them? Yes, just do it. OK. Go hard or go home. Suck it up. OK, about everybody's hands in here are raised. These are all typical messages of performance health. It's that very like, don't feel it, just do it kind of like idea of how you're supposed to go after these goals. Um, and we're raised to idolize perfectionistic ideals, as we talked about, right? These perfectionistic ideals are rooted in performance health. Performance health is another term that we at Strong Inside Out have created. We like to do that. And it describes systems, programs, and ideals that measure health against their standards or their metrics, often using shame and guilt as a tactic to motivate. Now, the goal with performance health is to be enough by their standards, not by our own. And body image is a great example of this. Now, everybody who grew up here in Western society probably grew up to being shown just a very few uh, examples of bodies that are, qualify as enough, right? And if you grew up believing that those, those uh, body types were enough, and you, they weren't healthy for you, you might have been maybe bullied or made to feel less than in some way. But if you fit into that like, certain little niche of body type that's very, very small, then you were made to feel like your body is what makes you enough. So either way, it's really unhealthy. Now the motivation that's rooted in performance health is basically a desperation to be enough for someone else. It's a need to fit a mold that not many can fit into, and it oftentimes requires going against your body's needs. And then there's how we're taught to go after these goals. You know, like our society teaches us to fix what's wrong, right? And with our health, we're taught to fix things with extreme measures. We're taught to fix them with extreme diets or cleanses. We're taught to fit them with extreme workout programs. And they're just not healthy for many people. They lead to unhealthy choices. Like overtraining and restriction is the norm for how our culture is told to go after goals. And you might have heard of the elusive balance, but most people are like, oh, that takes longer. I'm going to go for these extreme measures, right? It's most of us. It's how we were brought up. Now, all or nothing like this, these extreme measures, are not maintainable. And when we fall short of what we're taught we're supposed to do to fix this, we feel like failures and we give up. And we're caught in this all or nothing cycle of go all in to the extreme, then when it's not maintainable, fall into this failure uh, space over here, this giving up space over here. And then when we get the motivation to start again, we go right back into those extremes and land in the same space. The way that we are taught to go after goals sabotages our healthy efforts and makes it harder to try again. And we're meant to f feel like it's our fault. Like if we could just be stronger, we could do it. There are other people out there who are doing it, right? Why can't we just do it ourselves? All because we're taught to go after perfect or good enough in extreme ways. This is not health. Health is not what they say it is. Health is not a metric. Health is not how you look. Health is feeling good in your mind and your body and taking the actions to feel better, not just by somebody else's standards, but in yourself for yourself. Now, the motivation to work out regularly will continue for the rest of your life to wax and wane if it's rooted in being enough for someone else. But performance health says that that's the only way, that this is just what health is. 
but I'm here to offer you another way. I'm here to help you take your power back today. Now, so how do we do that? It's rooted in the mindset, like everything. Everything we do is rooted in the mindset. Now, if we continue to work from this all or nothing mindset, we're gonna keep ourselves in that so cycle of give up, fail, go all in, you know? We're gonna keep ourselves in that mindset. So the solution is to change your mindset, to change the way you talk to yourself, and to change the way you motivate yourself. And it all starts with the way that you talk to yourself. So what I'm gonna teach you today is my process called Read the Situation, Free the Situation. And it's a process that'll help you rewire your, what, rewire is a hard word to say, rewire your mental optics so that you can achieve that health, achieve that long lasting motivation that you have always wanted. But first I have a question for you. What would it be like if your main motivation was rooted in yourself instead of fitting someone else's mold? I'm gonna encourage you today to revolt against performance health's requirements for enoughness. I'm gonna encourage you to get in touch with how you wanna feel, not just when you achieve a goal, but on a daily basis, starting right now. Because we aren't here at this conference because we live by default, are we? We're not here because we're like, oh, is that what I'm supposed to look like? Is that what I'm supposed to be? Okay. We're here because we're brave, because we're willing to step out of that mold. So I'm gonna encourage you to do that today. Sound good? Yeah. Awesome. All right, so let's go into read the situation, free the situation. Let's go into the very first part, which is read the situation. So this part is focused on awareness of your thoughts. And it's meant to encourage a recentering of your motivations. Now we're gonna start with the awareness of your initial reaction or thought. And then we're gonna go into, and you know, examples, we're gonna stick to the examples that have to do with health here today. So examples of this are, I don't wanna work out today, or, oh God, I need to lose weight, or why can't I go as fast as that guy over there? And then we're gonna break it down. We're gonna break it down by asking, what is your perception? And what would your default reaction be? So we're gonna look at perception and the actual action that you would take after that. Then we're going to align it with how we want to feel. Decide if that's how you wanna be by asking yourself, how does it feel? And then aligning it with how you wanna feel. There we go. So let's go with the uh, thought example of, oh, first, before we get there, the goal of this, obviously, is to be in alignment with how you want to feel, you know, in your mind and your body. So this is where motivation starts to change and become less all or nothing. And how you want to feel is so often overlooked by performance health because it's focused on the outside. It's focused on being enough for somebody else. But when we center back in on ourselves and what we want as individuals, that's when we take our power back. That's when the motivation gets rooted in us and becomes long-lasting motivation. And that's my wish for you. So let's go through an example. So if the example is, I don't want to work out today, usually with performance health rooted examples like that, it's rooted in shame. It's rooted in an idea of, I should work out, or I need to work out in order to look a certain way. So we're gonna break it down, looking at perception first. Maybe the perception could be a whole bunch of different things, but a, a couple that are really, really popular are working out as a chore, or I feel like it has to be a certain amount of time or effort to be enough, or I need to work out in order to look this certain way. Then we look at the default reaction. Maybe your default reaction after having that thought is to skip it and feel guilty, which often leads to lots of skipped workouts. A lot of people who are stuck in that paralysis phase before they start a healthy movement routine feel like this. Or there's make yourself do it even though you hate it. There's these two options here. There are other options too, but we're gonna focus on those because those are the most prevalent. So, I am going to guess that 
all of you in this room have the goal of feeling good, right? Yeah. No? Okay, awesome. Not feeling bad. Either of those options, those default reactions and those perceptions feel like ish. I have to stop myself from swearing. Feel like ish. So we don't want those, right? Those do not feel good. So that's it for reading the situation. And we're not gonna stop there, so don't worry. We don't just leave you with all those bad feelings. The next part is called freeing the situation. And this is where it gets really fun because this is focused on choice and action. This is where you really take your power back here, guys. This is meant to encourage different action that backs up your new mindset and starts making it habit. So you get to choose how you want to react and respond here. So you're gonna, first of all, look for the balance. You're going to ask yourself what the loving action would be. Because I know when I say balance, a lot of people actually don't know what that is. Because for so long, we've been operating in this extreme kind of mindset and extreme kind of actions. So the easiest way to get to balance that I've found is just to ask myself, what would the loving action be? Cool? And then we're gonna ask ourselves, how would you rather respond to this, both in your head and in action? And you're gonna let how you want to feel lead what you choose to do. So we're gonna go back to the example of I don't wanna work out today. Keeping in mind that we're going for the balance here. So maybe we go back to our perception from read the situation and we see that we were expecting an ungodly amount of time or effort in order for our workout to be enough. What if it wasn't that way? What if we did a little bit less? What if we didn't go quite as hard and still did it? Or maybe you're just bored or burnt out on that type of exercise. Maybe you just need a different type of exercise that day. Or maybe you just need a rest day. You know, a lot of people feel really guilty and ashamed of needing rest days, and they're so important. That's when we really make the strides that we want to make in our goals. And maybe, this is one that I often struggle with, maybe you're focusing on the difficulty of the movement instead of what you actually get out of it. You know, all of these things are just simple shifts in that way of feeling the way you want to feel, remembering that you always, always have a choice. Nobody's making you do anything Nobody's shaming you into anything. This is all about you and you taking your power back, okay? Now, the next part is action. Whatever you realize, you're just gonna take what you realize and run with it and really make this happen for yourself. Taking that action, really, maybe even talking to yourself in a gentler way is the first step, you know? Or maybe taking a balanced action instead of an all or nothing one. It all starts small and build his way up from there. So that's my process of read the situation, free the situation. And it's a very basic process, but it is not easy, obviously. You know, otherwise we'd all be doing it already. It takes consistency, it takes effort, and I'm gonna encourage you anyways to stand up. To stand up to society's qualifications for enoughness, it really takes balls, you know, to stand up to that. Because a lot of people aren't doing it. A lot of people are in that kind of default uh, place. And that's not a bad thing. It's all about the choices you want to make. I just don't want your choices to be made for you. So I'm going to encourage you to stand up for true health, for how you want to feel, for feeling good and not beating yourself into submission for the sake of somebody else's standards. You know, doing this kind of work is really hard work, but it's also the most worthy work you're ever gonna do for your health. And that's all I got for you today. Thank you.